last year was uh, like a, a wow wow year in terms of uh, AI generative AI. Uh, but we can do also um, multimodal AI in in real life, uh, uh, more concrete, let's say, uh, a bit less sexy for sure, <laughs> because yes, okay. Uh, do uh, generating a picture with mid-journey is always a, a, let's say an experience, I, I, I think. So uh, here's <clears throat> the multimodal. Why multimodal? What is multimodal? Multimodal is regarding the, the typology and the, the, the different uh, categories of uh, data, digital. Uh, just uh, as, a as a reminder, we have four categories for um, the digital data. Uh, tabular data, the domain, the main uh, domain with data science. Uh, but not only, we have also sound, sounds um, structurally uh, underneath. It's not absolutely not the, the same uh, uh, structure, yes, uh, because it's a time series of frequency. So it's not a table directly with, with, um, with uh, numbers. Uh, so you have a, you have a lots of um, pre preparation before starting uh, any anything uh, with AI with sounds. We have also pictures for sure. It's absolutely not the same uh, structure also because it's a matrix of pixel, a matrix of pixel, a stat or a dynamic. Let's say a, a series, a time series also. If you have video, so it's absolutely not table. A table. It's a matrix uh, with a lots of uh, a pixel weight. Let's say, and we have also an, an, another category uh, as point clouds, with uh, not only a 2D coordinates but uh, the 3D with the depth uh, for the, this kind of point clouds uh, um, coming from the, the 3D scans like lidar and something like that, uh, which could provide also the color for each pixel now uh, in terms of uh, 3D scan. So uh, three categories, and the last. Very, very difficult to, to manage uh, in AI. It's a language. The language, it's a time series of characters uh, forming words. And the time series of words uh, are forming sentences. And the time series of sentences uh, are forming text. And it's very, very important. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the theory and the, the order of the word and the character, uh, for sure, is, is very important to have the mean of the data. And it's, it's very far for having only, let's say only, uh, a table with directly directly numbers and so on. So if you mix use cases uh, using this this all kind of uh, typology of data, you have multimodal. That's what we call multimodal. So let's say uh, text to uh, uh, text to speech or text to sound. The, the, mainly the text to sound or, or uh, today is the text to speech or the text to image. Okay, it's multimodal because we start with the text and we have at the end uh, we have a, a picture. So it's not the same uh, the same typology. But we can you you can also use inside the same um, use case um, the plus. We start with the data uh, in the table. We transform it. Why not? Uh, we use uh, sounds to label the data, for example, and uh, we after use uh, images coming from uh, outside to uh, verify um, uh, 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 an inference, for example, for a predictive model um, for the, the data tabular, for example. The purpose of this uh, presentation is to give you uh, some return of experience and real uh, cases, and uh, for sure, be, uh, after what I said um, to the text two image, so DALI, Midjourney, Sable Diffusion, we have a lot of uh, uh, possibilities now for that, and it's, it's, it's going further and further. Uh, incredible, uh, unincredible, inc more incredible, and, and even more incredible because now we have the, the first. I don't know if you if you have uh, uh, noticed that the text to video, the, the possibility to have not only one image but a, a time series of image uh, with a consentence. Um, it's very, very, very complex to 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 provide. And now also the text to 3D, uh, the possibility to to just prompt. Um, uh, text and not having only uh, a static image but a 3D mesh directly uh, mixing the NERF. I don't know if you know you know the NERF uh, technology uh, coming from the the first image and doing NERF after to create the mesh of the 3D uh, content. So 
We, that's, I, I turned the page for that. Uh, now let's talk more um, on not only text two, but uh, real, um, let's mixed of uh, use um, in, in, inside a single uh, use case. As I have only one uh, half, half an hour, I will pass the first, <laughs> sorry, pass the first example. Because it's it's quite uh, it's on active learning, so if you want to have a detail on that use case, we have uh, a booth on, on A2, as I remember, and uh, we are here, so we can talk about it. Um, it's a use case mixing uh, tabular data coming from uh, data capture uh, from mobiles, uh, using sounds to label the events, and then uh, using external data with a cycle to create a, a model and to label uh, the model step by step, and then using uh, external data as satellite pictures, recognize bumps. The, the idea is here, I need to have a bump detector only on the accelerometer coming from a mobile phone, a mobile phone inside a car. And so to do that, we have a very long process with multiple um, AI models uh, uh, helping each other and multimodal because we have so uh, tabular data, sorry, and and also pictures coming from the satellite. But okay, if you want to have, uh, if if you want to have some some detail, okay, come come uh, come after, and I will focus on the second one. Uh, very specific, very, very specific, sorry, it's, oh, one more time, it's in French, but the idea is I need to have the localization of a source or multiple source of radiation in a um, place, and I, I don't know, nobody knows where are these, and we have to, uh, let's say, clean <laughs> the place, and so there the, the, the are some, some uh, uh, company specialized on, on cleaning nuclear, uh, uh, past nuclear uh, space, uh, and uh, they, when they have to, to handle a new place, they have to, 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 to scan very quickly first the place and to, to, uh, to have measures, radiation measures, and to even to run because they don't know where are the radiation. It is very, very dangerous. Um, so they run inside the, the place, they take measures without knowing anything of the place, and on that, on that kind of data, the idea is, can AI localize, predict the coordinates of the sources of radiation, with only some measures, um, a sample of measures, uh, completely taken um, randomly, because as as the first time, nobody knows where is the where are the sources. We can't say okay, it's around here. So I will take uh, some some other uh, measures, specifically it, uh, uh, at that place. Uh, it's the second round, and the idea is using AI to globally localize where could be the sources to organize the second round for having more. Uh, accurate measures on that. Okay, so the, the very very specific use case, but the AI could uh, could help for that. So, what we have? Well, we have physics and radiation. So we can use um, simulators because it's um, completely um, mathematical and physics uh, approach. And first was to create what we have called the data set factory and we have used um, uh, so a simulator physics simulator to create a lots of theoretical places with a lots of um, parameters or scenarios let's, let's say or okay I will take one source uh, two sources one here one here and after uh, one one and a, a small one, uh, and so on and so on. So we have created a lots of measures, theoretical measures, um, based on, well, let's say, uh, uh, scenarios of uh, existing uh, and, and posi positioning of the sources. So we have, <coughs> sorry, the what could be, what what is one more time, theoretically, uh, the measures, the radiation measures uh, for each voxel, please. Okay, and to 
the, the second step for the data set factory is having getting samples of that as it was a human uh, who has done these measures in the real place. So we have uh, we take randomly some points, but with a series uh, which could be plausible, let's say, credible, as a, a data capture on, on uh, uh, in real life, let's say, okay? And then we have so data sets. And the data sets will be used to recreate from a sample to recreate the theoretical, the theoretical, all the theoretical uh, measures. So we take the data set and we train a model, a series of models with the, 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 the data sets. We create a model which is uh, uh, being able to, one more time, with a random series of new radiation, because the, this model has been trained with the set before. Okay, so we treat we, we we take a new random uh, measures. We ask the model to predict all the theoretical measures of the place. Okay, so inside these measures, there are the sources. So the idea is where are located the sources of radiation inside all these predicted uh, measures. And to do that, we could use maybe probably a, a, a decent gradient or something very mathematical. But the idea is, why not transform? Why transform this uh, data, tabular data into, into a, a, a picture? The idea is, okay, we will transform these uh, 3D measures. We will shrink, compact the Z axis with the, norm, with the normalization. And then we have a picture where the, 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 the weight of the pixel represents the measure of radiation. radiation. Why do we do that? Because we can, as, as we have now a picture, we can get all the possibilities of computer vision. And it will be far easier to find what we want on a picture than on a huge uh, 3D voxels. So what we do after that, we will uh, increase the resolution of, uh, um, uh, of the, the picture. That is to say, we have the, the each uh, for, for the, the resolution. It's not a here. It's not a dot per inch. It's a radiation per inch. So the, the model predicts a radiation per, let's say, uh, twenty or fifty uh, centimeters, and we want to be less than five centimeters. So we have to predict more, but it's very, very, very difficult to have that with data science. So we will use the picture. And we will use a, a well-known uh, model for the picture. To do that, we will increase the resolution with the super resolution models. Super resolution models, what is a super resolution model? It's a generative model. Uh, you, put, you put an image uh, as an entry of this kind of model, and it creates a new image, exactly the same shape of the entry, but with a higher here resolution that is used for um, a restoration of images, and uh, it's used uh, like uh, I don't know if you have seen that uh, that film before. It was one of the first um, restoration film uh, used because it's a uh, the entrance of a train in the La Ciota uh, station, a very old uh, French fi film movie, and the AI has reproduced image by image what, what uh, could be the, this movie if uh, it has been used, uh, it has been produced, sorry, by a 4K, 4K uh, camera and uh, at uh, 60 FPS. So that, that's pretty, at the beginning, super resolution. And AI doing that. Uh, underneath um, variation of encoder. Okay, and you, you can you can do that uh, uh, now. So the idea is taking this technology, uh, not used as a, for for what we for the purpose we, we, we wanted. Okay, okay.
So, super resolution, exactly as the movie. We will take the, let's say, the low uh, resolution image produced by the transformation of a tabular data uh, into an image, and we put it um, uh, in, a, in a super resolution model, and then, then we have a higher uh, picture with a higher definition. That is to say that as each pixel represents theoretically a radiation, we have an extrapolation of uh, and we have reduced the, the, the distance between two theory-carry uh, radiation. So when we have that, we have a good quality image, and it's very, very easy to put computer vision and to have thresholds, things, because the more dark, in that example, uh, the more dark the, 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 the zone of the picture is, the probably uh, the, 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 the source uh, the localization of the source is. And we can even predict uh, easily multiple sources uh, when uh, the, the, they, are, the, they are overlapping of uh, radiations. So when we have located with very simple computer vision and with far lower computational uh, uh, need, because it's, it's uh, very, it's not frugal, okay? But uh, it's very, very, um, uh, we have few, few uh, steps than uh, the gradient descent and so on. We, re, uh, we have the X and, and Y, and we do a, a very simple mathematical uh, operation to, 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 with, with our uh, voxels to have the Z axis. And then we have, uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, <laughs> of the localization and the coordinates of uh, our uh, radiation sources. So it's quite uh, tricky. Uh, it's uh, quite difficult, uh, maybe, to explain and to uh, to to have uh, to, to to understand. But that's uh, typically um, what we are used to do for complex uh, use cases. And um, no no let's let's say no no brain frontier or for something like that. Uh, we always uh, uh, have in mind that we can transform data to ease the process and maybe to, to use something on the shelf we, and when, when we have uh, other type of data like uh, computer vision in, in that case. Okay, so it was tabular data, then image, then tabular data. Okay, is that... Uh, um, last uh, one, uh, ah oui, yes. Okay, we can go further. Uh, by, by uh, uh, avoiding some steps using mm, sirens. I don't know if you know the siren model. Uh, it's a very advanced uh, model which can predict a picture with only some pixels. It's like in painting, but not with zone. It's in painting by a random distribution of pixels. So the idea of a siren, you put that, that kind of image uh, as an entry, and it creates, it creates the, the picture you have seen uh, before. Uh, so Siren, what is Siren? It's uh, like a standard fully connected uh, neural, network, neural network, but with uh, activation function based on synoidal uh, representation. That's very tricky uh, mathematically, but it gives uh, incredible um, results. So the, the paper uh, was in um, uh, two years ago, yes. Um, and um, so the idea is one more time: you give some pix some pixel randomly, and it is able to recreate the image, the probable image, based on only some pixel. It's 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 magical, <laughs> but it works. It's complicated to implement, but with that kind, with that kind of technology, we can even so we, we the put you put a, 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 the the coordinates of a pixel and you have the color. So to to recreate our uh, um, our uh, picture that we want to to have a computer vision on, uh, it's it's quite exactly what we want because we have the distribution. Uh, we don't predict the whole. Radiation. We only take that that uh, measures. It gives us some pixels because it's only uh, it's a random uh, uh, sample. We transform that data in that image, and that image 
will be generated after being passed through a siren. And then when we have this kind of image, then we uh, take the, 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 the pass process, we have super resolution and computer vision and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, okay. So, a step further in complexity, but uh, with incredible results. Okay? Uh, just uh, one, five minutes, four, four minutes, <laughs> for another uh, example, uh, completely different. For, uh, we, we, we have uh, a lot of uh, what we call paraphrasing, the creation of um, a sentence based on another sentence. So we put a sentence, and the AI gives us another way to explain, uh, let's say, the intent or the the, ending, the 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 original sentence. That is not uh, uh, that is not uh, multimodal, but it it would be useful to create data set factory to train uh, language models and to train chatbots because uh, you have automatically, automatically, let's say, okay, uh, some utterance, you, you put an intent and you have a lot of utterance, you can uh, very fast, the, in a very faster way, train your chatbot with new content. Okay, so um, to do that, it's not multimodal because it's text to text, but the key with this kind of model, of paraphrasing model, is the plausibility, the credibility of the sentence Created because there, there are lots of uh, possibility and um, the, the the results given by the, the AI are not all the results are not with a good um, uh, a good level of quality let's say and so the the plausibility grammatical one and the sen the set the, the mean of the sense has to be kept because uh, regarding the the original uh, phrase so the idea that okay, the sentence, not the phrase. Sentence. You have, we have a lot of sentence, and we have to measure the credibility or the plausibility, let's say, of what is uh, what has been done um, and what has been generated. And we have uh, multiple ways to score this plausibility, this uh, this uh, this credibility, with a lots of um, algorithm like bleu, rouge, uh, etc. So we have a lots of possibilities to. And then this sentence is good, and this sentence is not good. We have to create a lots of uh, rules, rules saying, okay, if uh, we are more than uh, uh, 90 here and less than uh, for this one, and maybe between the uh, for the x1, etc., and it's, it, it becomes very, very difficult to have rules to say, okay, this sentence is good, or this sentence is not good. Very tricky to have a real a rules to do that. But if you, if you have a, uh, issues to, to, to create rules, let's use AI. So we have a model here, because this is exactly tabular data. And we know, after that, it's supervised AI, because we know as we, for the training phase, that this sentence is good, this one is not, this one is not, this, this one is good. So we put the vector in the, in the classifier with two class, good, not good, and we train with the data set, labelized, well, we, with label, we train uh, all the, the scores to have a, 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 a classifier uh, saying after that, when it's, it's trained, we put a sentence, it creates a lot of sentence. We classify the sentence and we keep only the sentence with the good classification saying, okay, it's a good sentence. Okay, you see, uh, without any rules put after on the, the score of uh, credibility. That's it, um, just in time. So, okay, uh, just for, for as a remember, uh, text, language, then uh, helped by um, the data science. So it was <coughs> just a sharing of uh, concrete, maybe a bit, a bit complex <laughs> use cases, but uh, the idea is um, uh, being able to do multimodal AI is a very uh, a strength because you can go far deeper and far um, 
uh, yes, let, let's say far deeper in the solution you can provide for very complex use cases. Uh, we, 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 we are not here, yes, to, to in, in cases of we, we can just uh, take an API and, um, and have a result. It's very complex and very specific use cases, but uh, it's very important to have in mind that uh, we can mix now very easily uh, the type of data to, to achieve the, the Thank you. Thank you.